All right, God bless everybody. Hope you all having a wonderful day. Um, last few times I've been out, I've been asked a few questions a couple times by different people that, you know, I get to fish bigger water sometimes. And uh, I've been asked by several people that bigger water tends to overwhelm us. You know, how, how do you fish bigger water to where it doesn't intimidate you to where, you know, uh, I mean, you got a lot of water to cover. Let's be honest. I know me personally, I can't afford to spend $70 in a tank of gas, uh, just in the truck, the boat alone to go all over a lake. You know, most of us, we get one day off. How am I going to even attempt to, uh, come up with some decent spots to go fishing. Do we just up and go fishing and that's it? How, how do we deal with it? Well, like I've told you several times, I'm no different than anybody else. Um, I have though been doing it maybe a little bit longer. That doesn't always mean that that's a smarter person just because you've been doing it longer, trust me. Uh, I'm getting ready to show you uh, or try my best to show you anyway, a little bit of how I break down a bigger lake to make it a little bit easier to get an idea of where fish might be. Is it foolproof? No, it's not. That's, that's one of the things about fishing is that variables change all the time, okay? You've got sky conditions that change versus light or dark or a cloudy day. You've got weather, you've got the, the weather itself, you know, windy conditions versus no wind. That changes situations. You've got water clarity. The water clarity can be in so many different phases. You also have seasons because fish move a lot of times based on seasons. You've got um, rising water versus their drawing water. Like here recently, they drew down about all the different lakes. They drew them down, some of them 30, 40 feet, some of them more than that that moves fish. So what I'm getting ready to show you is just a breakdown that I use and I've developed over the last couple of years, especially I've used it a lot this year to try to narrow down and determine as quickly as I can, at least try to get an idea of where the fish might be and where I need to spend 70 to 80% of my time. Now, here's what you also got to understand. If I start doing this and say, I catch one or two fish in one of these spots, and then I go for about an hour and I don't, and then all of a sudden I catch a fish on a different location, I don't automatically change what I'm doing, but I try to pay attention to where I caught that fish, and then I try to find other places that are similar to it. So hopefully this will make sense. Hopefully it'll help you break down a little bit. If anybody has any questions, you can message me. You, you, I'll try my best to help as best I can, but to be honest with you, we're all learning. And if we all was to actually share with each other and not be scared to death that everybody's gonna, you know, uh, catch our fish, which I know a lot of people fish tournaments and they don't wanna do this kind of thing. I understand that. Me, I don't know if I'm gonna be here tomorrow. So anymore, I try to help people when I can. Um, and I just, I do my best to try to share what I can about what I'm doing in the spots I'm at. Uh, I don't give out a lot of locations and where exactly I am because let's be honest, if most times if you was to tell somebody where you're at, next thing you know, you'd have a hundred different people going to that exact same spot. And to be honest with you, I learned at a little lake that I used to fish all the time that the more pressure fish get, the more they move. So believe it or not, after you catch a fish a time or two in one location, it's my personal opinion that they move out of that location um, just because they get pressured. They get pushed. They, they, get, they get that sense that, hmm, I keep getting caught and taken to the top, and this guy takes his picture with me. You know, they don't think exactly like that, but you know what I mean. Um, so anyway, I, I don't want to try to make this very long, but I know that it is going to take just a little bit of time to go over what I'm talking to you about. 
I'm gonna switch the, get the camera viewpoint and put it down because I've got a paper where I've drawn out a couple little things. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna try my best to explain this best I can. Um, just be patient with me and uh, let's go ahead and flip the view. All right, so excusing my drawing, um, but I'm not exactly a talented artist. I'm just trying my best to do little by little what I can. Uh, trying to write it out because I know some of it's it's easier for us to see what's going on as we talk okay so first we're going to we're going to determine and we're going to give a small little definition of what different terms are so that when we're talking we kind of have an idea of what we're talking about okay so this to me is a representation of a flat okay a flat is literally what it sounds like um, it's not flat as this piece of paper but as you can see, it changes depths as, and it drags the way that it comes out, okay? So from this point here, which is the bank of the lake, it, we got five foot of water. It's further away from the lake. See how there's actually a distance. So I drew like a little small tree here to kind of give an idea. This right here can be 10 or 15 feet away from the bank, this first little drop off right here that goes to seven feet. This could be 20 feet from the bank. Now here we are 30 feet from the bank and we've only gone from zero to 10 feet. So if we had our boat coming through here, there's a good possibility that we're missing all this stuff. But if we had our boat up in here, we would have to move around this tree because it would probably hit the bottom of our boat. Um, this right here, I drew it, it's supposed to be a boulder. This boulder right here, if we're not careful in five feet, then what would happen that it would probably scratch the bottom of our boat, depending on how up it comes. So this is what we're gonna call a flat. Most of the times, not always, but most of the times this has gravel on it. And you say, well, yeah, I catch, I, 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 I catch fish a lot of there sometimes of the year. Okay, so that's somewhat what we're gonna talk about. Most of the times, early in the morning, or if the water is muddy, it goes back to that clarity. Or if it's real windy, you have an opportunity that fish might be up in this spot, okay? The problem is, how in the world do I know that they're on the flats, okay? So we've already spent a little time determining that, hey, there's, this is what a flat is, okay? So it doesn't get deep. You have to come a long way away before you get to this 12 feet. Say this is 30 to 40 feet. We'll call each one of these 10 feet. You may have to be 40 feet away from the bank in order for you to get to this flat. Now I'm just gonna tell you right now, my experience, unless you have these type of cover, this is a boulder right here, maybe a log, just some type of cover and it has all this little gravels and bigger boulders around it. Fish love to be around that kind of stuff. Spotted bass love to be around these trees, okay? When you get these boulders in these places like this, it depends if they're up feeding because they're feeding on crawdads and stuff like that. They may be up in here. These bigger boulders, smallmouth, they love to be around these bigger boulders spread out everywhere. But it's a gravel. So we can see that there's there's not a whole lot. That there is cover there to hold it, but there's not very much, okay? But the problem we run into is that if the sun comes up, as soon as the sun comes up and the light shines on this spot right here, okay, good opportunity that they're going to be centered into these spots or they're going to leave, all right? Because fish don't have eyelids. Fish don't, don't just sit out in the open most of the time and just hang out, okay? Most of the time they feed by looking, by hiding. So if there's no wind and the sun's come out and we've got clear water, there's a good opportunity that this isn't going to hold fish, okay? So let's go on to the next picture because we've got another thing we've got to talk about. So another area we're going to talk about is the bluff bank. So bluff bank, you've got a whole different setup. You still have water and you see us still have cover. I drew this tree here because a lot of times you see the logs laying up against the bank and it stretches all the way down because it's a big log. Then you've got all these little boulders and stuff, but here's what we want to look at. What I want you to look at is 
how far away from the bank you have to be before you hit this 30 feet, okay? You don't have to be as far from the bank. Right here, you may be 25 to 30 feet away from the bank, but you're already in 30 foot, okay? Because if we look at the contours, it goes from 5, 10, 15, 20. Every foot or two looks like it has a drop, but then it looks like there's some type of shelf, okay? Because that's where all these boulders and stuff is. But then way out here, you get to 40, but we're pretty close to the bank. This type of bank becomes really important. Why? Because if we were faced with that situation to where, okay, up here along the bank, it was sunny that morning, but we came to it and we started fishing this bank. When the sun came up, those fish on that flat, they have to travel 40 to 50 feet to get completely away from the sun unless they hide in that shade. Here, what they can do is they only have to travel maybe 20 feet and they just suspend out here. All they're gonna do is just stay out here and just float. Now they can stand around this corner if they want to and just kind of hover around that corner, not stand, but you know what I mean. So they can stay in this area, okay? But the number question that we have is, yeah, man, but whew, you're talking about a big lake. How in the world and a big lake am I going to determine where they at? Are they on the bluffs? Are they on the flats? Because I can't fish every flat. There's no way. There's no way for me to cover every bluff bank. And if all I do is go down through here and I focus on just these trees or just these rocks, I may, I may never catch a fish. Well, I'm gonna tell you what led to this little theory that I'm getting ready to show you. Is years ago, I used to go to a lake, okay? I'll turn you back to the other view just to give you an idea, but you get an idea. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about a flat or we're talking about a bluff. This is what we're talking about. We got these quick changes of depth that are pretty close to the bank. And then we have these right here. This is 30 and this is the shelf right here. There's a shelf starting at 20 feet. And then here's 30. Now you gotta remember that the water change, which we, that's a whole nother subject we get into, the water and the depth of the water has a lot to do with this, whether this is undercover or not, or underwater or not. All that changes. If the water's muddy, guess what? They're gonna stay up top longer. If you come out early in the morning and you start fishing, guess what's gonna happen? Those fish are gonna stay right there. There's no read for them to suspend. The only time they're gonna suspend is when the sun comes out. When that sun comes out, it's amazing how those fish, the bite's over. Why? Because they they don't go to another bank. What they do is they pull out. And they're still here. They're just suspended most of the time. Okay? So I'm going to change back views, and we're going to talk a little bit, and then we're going to go back to the final little page that I drew out. All right. So what led me to what I'm getting ready to show you is that years ago, um, I used to fish one little lake, a little local lake, all the time. And I was blessed a lot of the times to catch some nice fish in it. But I had learned the contours in that little lake. I had learned where the trees were. I had learned I could pretty much cover that lake in a day's time fairly easily. So if I went to one section and they weren't there, then I would go back to the other. And then eventually you kind of narrowed down where there was. But every time the friend of mine would go to a bigger lake, it seemed like that we never would run into fish until the end of the day. And that just seemed like how it always was. You know, we would cover water and cover water. Now, what we did was we, we usually fished a jig. And this is where some people are going to get upset, but it's just how it is, okay? A jig is a wonderful bait to use. Love throwing a jig. But the problem with the jig is you don't really cover water. Therefore, I learned that what we tend to do, if you're pretty confident that the fish are there, by all means, take your time and fish that jig. But until you get a pretty good idea of where those fish are, that jig is actually slowing you down, okay? Because first, you need to kind of narrow down where those fish are positioning themselves, especially in a bigger lake. In a little lake, it's real easy. Like I said, you can cover the whole lake. In a bigger lake, you have to narrow it down. 
So what started coming to mind is at that smaller lake, if I only had a few hours, what I would do is I would go to a spot on that lake that had several of the different types of water that I've just talked about, okay? I'm gonna flip you back to the other view and I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit what I mean. Remember, when you go to these bigger lakes, let's be honest, there's not enough hours in the day for me to put that trolling motor down and cover that whole lake. So what I need to do is I need to find me a spot that I can fish that location a couple times. And then based on my actual findings, not on what I saw on the dead finder, based on my actual catches, maybe this is what I need to do the rest of the day. And then you may have to change it as the day goes on. That may be what they did early in the morning. That may not be what they do in the afternoon. Okay, let's change the view again and we'll go over what I'm trying to tell you. All right, so we've talked about a uh, flat, we've talked about a bluff. This right here is just an example of the pocket. This isn't any particular pocket. This is just a pocket that I just drew myself to kind of get an idea of maybe better explaining. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, I'm not the best drawer in the world, but this, this is hopefully this will kind of explain a little bit, okay? So what I want to do is I want to take a big lake and I want to look at the maps, okay? And usually what I want to do is I want to come up with a pocket that, let's be honest, if I'm trying to determine what the rest of the lake is doing, I want a pocket that is alive, okay? And what I mean is I want a pocket that has a feeder creek that comes into it. Now, it doesn't always wind up there. Sometimes the feeder creek's over here and it just, but anyway, it needs a feeder creek somewhere in it, okay? It needs to have a base creek somewhere in there. Why does that become so important? Because that fresh water dictates a lot of why that creek stays alive and why it has bass in it a lot of times. A lot of times, just a regular pocket, fish will go to it and then they'll leave, but they don't really stay there year round. Now, a creek, in my opinion, from my experience, they do, okay? In the springtime, back in those feeder creeks is a good place to go to. Anytime after a rain, it's good to go back in those feeder creeks because water's running in, okay? You're getting fresh water. That's, they, they love going to that type of stuff. But here's, here's what I wanted to tell you about getting a bigger lake. So as you can see, over here, this would be the entrance to it. This is what we're gonna call, this is a point, okay? And right here's a point. And I want you to look very closely at this point. This point right here is a bluff point, okay? You have two different ones. You have a bluff point and you also have a flat point. If you can find a point that on that wall on that point, you not only have a bluff, but you also have a point. And guess what you've just done? You've just narrowed down one of the most popular places for bass to live to figure out very quickly where they're at, okay? Why is that? Because if you get there early in the morning, there's a good possibility that you can fish this flat, this close to this point. Why? Because early in the morning, fish love going to points because that's where the bait fish loves to hang out. That's where a lot of these little critters and animals and everything, all these little water things are usually around the points. So you can come up here and you can get around on a flat, they'll be here early morning, but remember what we talked about. After that sun comes up, they're gonna go down. Well, this is gonna give you a little bit of a quick idea because you're gonna fish through this flat, and then all of a sudden you're gonna fish the bluff. And what you have to pay attention to is if you caught those fish on a flat, where did you catch them on a the flat? Did you catch them on a flat right before you hit a bluff? Did you catch them on chunk rock right before you hit them on gravel? Because that's a transition area. Where this transitions from flat to bluff is probably one of your highest percentage points. And if you can find that on a point, then you've definitely found a gold mine. Why? Because you have found a big spot. So I found that in one pocket. Now, what am I going to do? After the sun comes up, okay, after the sun comes up, there's a good possibility that these fish right here, what are they going to do? They're going to pull out and they're going to suspend. 
there's a good possibility that after the sun comes up to these fish right here, they're going to pull all the way from here or they're going to go over this direction to suspend. Why? Because they don't like being in that sunlight. Okay. They have to be around some sort of cover. Well, now what am I going to do with the rest of my fishing day? Because I got up at six o'clock in the morning and now it's 10 o'clock and I've got a bluebird day. What am I going to do? What you need to do is use wisely the time you have. And since you have caught them on this section right here, what I tend to do is I tend to go right around inside this and I'm going to fish these points. These would be secondary points. I'm going to go down through there and I usually go down and fish these and I'm looking to see, are there any fish? I'm not worried about, are they five pounds? I'm not worried about, are they 15 pounds? What I'm worried about is, are there fish back in here? A lot of times what we do and, and tournament guys, I understand tournament guys, they're after winning fish is what they're worried about. Me personally, I just like getting a bite. I'm not worried about a tournament. <coughs> I'm not worried about <coughs> posting the pictures with the biggest fish. I just love catching fish. Now, I tell you what I've stumbled onto doing this type of fishing that kind of surprised me. As I started going through there, and I did pretty good on the point early in the morning, but that bite shut off about 9, 10 o'clock. I eased around this corner, and what happened was is the sun wasn't shining on these banks. So most of the time, if it's winter time, I tend to, or if it's late summer or winter, when that, I tend to stay in the shade as long as I possibly can. Why do I do that? Because like I said, I've seen much more times that those fish will stay up around these banks as long as that shade stays on them. So when I came through here, I started catching a lot of little fish on a little stretch just like this, okay? A lot of little fish, a lot of little spotted bad. What was I doing? I was throwing the top water because the water was clear. And I was, all these little fish were hitting, but all of a sudden I would run across a boulder that I didn't know was there. But I would run over top of a boulder and here would come this large mouth or this small mouth come straight up or large mouth come straight up grab my top water next thing you know I'd have an 18 19 inch small mouth and I was like wow I would have never believed it so what most of us tend to do is oh I caught me a little lot of little fish I'm just gonna leave this bank there's nothing but little fish on here those little fish are there for a reason they're on that bank for a reason and if those little fish are on that bank you've got a very high possibility that those bigger fish are on that bank too. Because after I released that fish, I kept on going back inside here. And guess what happened? A lot, I caught a couple other little spotted bass. And then next thing you know, I come around the corner and I wind up having another smallmouth come straight up and hit my bait. And I had a fight on for a few minutes until he got off. And I was like, wow, that's two. So I caught one on the point. I went into this pocket and I remember I'm on a shaded bank and I started throwing that top water and I had all kinds of little spotted bass hit me and I caught a few of them, but then I had another big smallmouth. What did that tell me? That told me that this, this creek was holding fish. It's holding fish most of the time. Why is it holding fish? Because it has everything that they need in here. Remember, we've got a feeder creek. It also has bluff sections to where they can suspend. And then what I did was, is I marked those spots and I went back. And the interesting thing was, is that I went back and I looked and everywhere I had caught one of those keeper smallmouth, which a lot of people don't do, I started make, putting X's on that bank and I started realizing that all the places where I caught them were bluff spots. They were bluff locations. <coughs> <coughs> Why? Because that water, had changed just like this here. It had, it was a quick drop to where they could be close to the bank and still feed, but they could be on these boulders and that's exactly what they were doing. They were coming straight up to hit whatever came across them. Versus this flat, they would have to come all the way out here to hang out or sit right here in this. And there's very few things that's gonna go down through there because they can see them. But these fish down here, remember what how bass feast most of the time? Bass are opportunistic feeders. They sit down low and they sit just like a line in their den next to their 
boulders and when something goes over top of them especially a top water that looks like it's struggling they're going to come straight up and just absolutely destroy it because they're coming from underneath it okay so the same thing was happening to me the further i went down in here so later on that day when i got home all those places that i had marked i came back through and i checked and i was like i wonder what the bank was like in those sections so i pulled it up on my depth on my fish finder and i realized that all those banks that those bigger fish had come and attacked me on every one of those was bluff banks all right well like i said i hope that made sense um one of the most important things you can do and look i just, I just want to go ahead and say this do you have to overthink things the way that i do sometimes no you don't can you go fishing and just go fishing and just go down your favorite bank and if you get bit, you get bit? Yes. This right here is for somebody to help them. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but this right here is to help them to say, look, if you want to learn a body of water and take the time to actually learn, can we figure fish out 100%? No, we can't. Okay, they're a living creature. They change daily, but they do have patterns that they go by. They do have little things to me. This is what make this is one of the things to me that makes fishing fun is that I can go out and I can try out different pockets, different things. If I was to go and I would fish like that pocket that we showed there and say I fished the point and then I go back in there for a little bit and I fish some of those other secondary points and I don't get bit in them. And then I kind of skip around and I fish another little bluff wall and I don't get bit on it then I may make the decision, you know what? I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna go over to this bank on the left side because that one side I showed y'all there, a lot of it was a bluff side. On the other side, there was flats. Sometimes you run into the opposite. Sometimes you may be going down a bank and all of a sudden it's not a bluff no more. All of a sudden it's a flat. You've cranked through it a little bit or you've drug your jig through a little bit. You haven't had a bite. And you're like, man, the bites that I did get, I had over there on that bluff. Well, guess what? switch sides switch sides of that pocket and start going through the other one and then what you do when you start figuring out and start narrowing down during the day hey you know what every fish i've caught today has come off a block of a bluff wall but it wasn't just any bluff wall it was like 10 15 feet and then what you do is you duplicate that to the next pocket you may go into a pocket and think you know what this pocket looks great you start idling around and you start looking and you're like Man, this is shallow. There's no cover in here. There's no rocks. There's no nothing. Everybody nowadays, and look, if you want to spend the money on it, I'm not saying that you don't have to, but everybody wants to spend money on these expensive depth finders, and they want to spend money on these live scopes and all this other stuff. You can do all that if you want to. Me personally, I enjoy going, and I enjoy trying to figure out what they're doing. I enjoy going in there and seeing, oh man, they're on this bank or they're on that bank. Or I, I, I just, to me, that that's what fishing's all about. Am I always going to be successful? No, I'm not. But to me, if all you're doing is just sitting in your boat, watching a little video and it's telling you, well, there's no fish there, keep going to me, then why don't you just stay home and play video games? Because that's pretty much what you're doing. It's, that's all you're doing is you're just playing a video game. You're not really figuring anything out. A lot of times, like I said, fishing, you really can't do that way. You can't really sit around and, oh, I know exactly where they're going to be. There's many days I've gone and I haven't caught a fish. But this is just a brief overview of what I do because you take a big lake and at first it overwhelms you. What you need to do is take that one little pocket, look at them on a map before you ever go, look at the way that map is contoured you can buy maps you can look on we've got the internet anymore look and see and say okay look i wonder if they're on the bluffs or wonder if they're on the flats and then kind of go from there you may get there and be like nah this don't look like it did in the picture may not be the right spot but you might be surprised there's plenty of days like i said the weather and the temperature changes everything I've started off on those flats, and because it's a rainy day, because it's a windy day, I've caught fish on flats all day long. Because that's the temperatures, the change of weather, everything, it held them there. But once it becomes a bluebird day, it changes. 
You may have to go to Shady Banks. You may have to go to Bluffs. Anyway, I don't want to drag it out too far. This is already a long video, but I hope it helps. Uh, anybody that still has questions, message me. I'll try my best. Maybe this is giving you a little bit of tips here and there. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm no different than you all. I'm just, this just came to mind. Maybe it'll help everybody a little bit. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day. And one more little thing I'll tell you. On your phone, most of us have Google Maps. When you catch a fish, if you don't have a fancy, de uh, fancy depth finder, pull up Google Maps. It'll show a little dot right where you're at. Screenshot that little dot and then go on to the next spot. And then when you get home, you can study that on Google Maps because it'll show you a little dot where your location was every time. Then you can go from there. Just a simple little tip. Anyway, God bless. Y'all have a great day. We wish we could be fishing on every day off that we have, but let's be honest, it's not realistic a lot of times. A lot of days we have other things around the house we need to do. So enjoy the days that you're on the water. Hopefully this will help you have a better day on the water and be more successful. Thank God for everything he's given me. Hope he blesses you. And above all things, remember, Jesus loves you. You have a great day.